I know most of you are fed up with this. And I, I do like the idea, the ritual idea of somebody just saying a few words to open an exhibition. I know we've had fashion for a while, and it seems to have come back in again, but I'm not going to do 15, 20 minutes, as some of my colleagues may have done in the past. However, that's not criticism, that's just an observation. Uh, I'm delighted to have been asked to do this because uh, 20 years ago, the very first event to take place in this building was my class's final year show. And this is the penultimate event to take place here. The only other event, a public event to take place here, will be this year's final year show. Cause, so it kind of neatly completes the circle for me. I'm very glad to have been able to be part of that. I'm very glad to have been able to work with this group, although I haven't managed to see more of you together than today <laughs> at any given time in the past few weeks. But you all pulled together extraordinarily well. This is the third in the series of third year shows in the off-broadcast space and it distinguishes itself from the other shows in that it's not a group show as such, it's a collaborative venture. And I know that was a brave decision to make because with a group of 11 people, which is quite a large group to pull together, and particularly a difficult group of art students as you are, to actually get <laughs> to actually come to any kind of consensus about anything, and you've done extremely well in doing that. Uh, and I think it, 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 collaboration is something which has become extraordinarily fashionable over the last number of years. And I think it's been sort of built in, I was talking to some people about this earlier on, it's become built into our teaching that you have to work as teams or in collaboration with each other. And just some two things I want to say about that. That doesn't suit everybody. As artists, you don't necessarily want to work with other people. You see yourself as individuals who are plowing your own furrow and working your own path through the whole process of education and on into professional art making. So that it's not something you necessarily that necessarily sits comfortably with all of you. Some people love it. Now the other aspect of it is because of the nature of contemporary practice and the nature of, say, socially engaged practice, relational aesthetics, uh, the fact that the only money left in a professional art making at the moment is in these kind of areas. You're kind of forced into doing it. So I appreciate that not all of you like it, but not all of you have to. There's two things about it. One is that not everyone is a collaborative artist all the time. And no more than any one of you is a photographer all the time or a painter all the time. You move in and out between these areas of engagement. So learning how to work in a collaborative situation is really, really useful skill as an art maker, as a creative. It's also very, very important in the look sense, this in the professional sense. All of you will probably leave here and form some kind of collective or group or working in a studio together. And you're all going to have to work as teams, whether or not in a collaborative sense, in the creative sense, but in the collaborative sense in putting shows together. Who's going to do the printing? Who's going to organize the emails? Who's going to, who's going to sit on the printer so that when they make a complete mess of it, you can tell them before it's actually produced on the night of the show? Who's going to actually take command of, and who's going, to, who's going to lead certain aspects of the process? And the idea of allowing somebody to take leadership. Some people like to take control of situations. Some people naturally step into the breach and naturally just shout orders at other people. Um, I think I might be one of those. Um, but other people like to actually just be part of the team and play the game and actually contribute and play a major role in the situation without necessarily being the person to call the shot. So this is a learning process. And I often talk about the fact that what we do here is a very artificial situation. It's not like the real world. It's not like what it's like going to be like for you when you in two in a year and a half or <coughs> next summer twelve months, when you start to set up studios for yourself. It's not like that situation. But the re one of the reasons it's not like that is that there are safety nets here. So that if if you do make mistakes, if you do trip and fall, there's some people to catch you, there's people to correct you in the in the positive sense of correcting you, not in the like, sense of correcting you. Uh, but in the sense of being able to say, Okay, that didn't work out because and maybe if you tried this. So it is an artificial situation, but it's an artificial situation for a reason. And it's an artificial situation which allows you to explore. And this year for all of you has been a huge journey of exploration. And I can see this having come back in only seven or eight weeks ago. And having seen your transformation from when I last taught you in second year. Uh, and seeing, you know, you've all grown up. Uh, which is kind of weird. Uh, I mean, you haven't grown up that much now, but a bit. Uh, but, you know, you've all matured as, as, as practitioners. You've all changed your ideas. You've all come to make. You've all learned loads of skills as well, which is great.
but you've all, you know, you've all evolved as people in your thinking about art making. And I think that's really important. Um, what else am I going to talk about? I should have written this down, shouldn't I? Uh, I was going to talk for a moment about the actual show itself. I'm not going to describe the experience. I think it was a very uh, mature decision on the part of the collaborators to not tell you what was going to happen in the and allow you just to experience it.